What's new with this camera is that it uses 12 white LED lights, which can be set to automatically turn on when motion is detected, as well as a 85 decibel siren. The camera also uses something called smart AI human detection, which means it can distinguish a human from other moving objects, like a pet or a moving car for example. And I think it worked pretty good, I didn't get any false alarms when I had it turned on, even when I tried to trigger the camera. And it didn't have any problem detecting me either when I was walking in front of the camera. Human detection is of course optional and you can turn it off in the app if you don't want to use it. Since this is a smart camera there is no web interface, which makes the camera settings very limited and you have to rely on what's in the app and the PC client, which isn't really much. It does however support RTSP stream and I did connect the camera to both Blue Iris and iSpy. You can either have the camera to record 24-7 or only when motion is detected and it supports up to 128GB microSD card and you can watch the recorded footage in playbacks in the app. It also supports two-way audio so you can talk and listen through the camera. And this is how it sounds like when I talk through the camera. And the camera is made for outdoor use with IP67 rating, which means it's dust and waterproof and the working temperature is between minus 30 and 55 degrees Celsius. For night vision it uses 12 infrared lights and they are supposed to have a distance up to 25 meters in total darkness. And since the camera also have 12 white LEDs, it can also record in full color at night. You can either set the camera to automatically turn on the white LEDs when motion is detected or you can have them on all the time or only use normal infrared night vision. What we get in the box is the camera, power adapter, quick start guide and a bag with screws. Okay so on the front of the camera we got a lens, 12 white LEDs and 12 infrared lights and then we got a LED indicator which I don't understand why they put there since it will always blink in green when the camera is turned on. At least there should have been an option in the app to turn it off. Under the camera we will find a speaker and to access the SD card slot we need to open up this cover. The cables are the standard power, network cable and reset button. Turn on the camera and open up the app and click on the plus icon to add a new device. Here we can either use AP mode or you can scan the QR code. I will show you how to do it using AP mode. So click on that and it will automatically connect to your camera. Then all you need to do is add your Wi-Fi and wait for it to connect. And that's it. In here we can turn on and off live view, turn on and off the sound, change image quality and full screen, push to talk, record video, take a snapshot, watch playbacks and turn on the alarm. Unfortunately the app doesn't have that many settings to play around with. So what we do have is change password, share device and in smart detection we can turn on push notifications, turn on the siren as well as the spotlight. We can set motion detection sensitivity and human detection or normal motion detection. In night vision mode we have color night vision black and white night vision and then smart night vision. We can set the time, Wi-Fi, rotate and in recording mode we can set the camera to record 24-7 or when motion is detected. And that's basically all the settings we have to play around with. Okay let's have a look at some recordings. Here I test how far away you can read a license plate. And here I am at around 10-15 meters and I think that's about the maximum distance to read a plate number. And this is at night time, not in complete darkness though since there is a street light just across the street. This is night vision set on auto which means when the camera detects motion it will turn on the white LEDs. The problem with this is they will never turn off unless you do it manually in the app. Most cameras I've tested with this feature the lights will turn off automatically after a minute or so.
And here I test how long it takes to get the push notification to a smartphone. I also turned on mobile data here. 